Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. All right, so when a developer of a plugin actually does a really good job on something, I tend to stick with that plugin for quite a while. So I understand that I've spent a lot of time talking about Rust kits on a previous couple of videos. Today is going to be the last one in this, we'll call it a series for lack of a better term. But it is worth noting that this new version of Rust kits is by far better than the old one and it gives you way more features. Now, one of the things that I'm seeing people struggling with right now is how to set up the auto kits feature. And that is a very important feature of this plugin and I know a lot of people use it and I know that it's causing people some issues right now. I'm going to very quickly go over all of the details that you need to know about auto kits, how to set them up and how to make it so that you can have multiples as well as being able to turn them off. All right, so in preparation for this video so that you guys didn't actually have to see me make these kits because I know you've watched me do this 100 times before, I've already gone ahead and set up a couple of different kits. I've set up an auto kit that I want all of the default players to automatically have as soon as they spawn into the server. I've also gone through and created two more kits, one with VIP level one and one with VIP level two. And you'll see what I mean by that because I've assigned permissions to those kits. And that's important because when you're putting these kits into the configuration file for Rust kits, it has to be done in a specific specific order so the plugin actually checks which permission the player has before it will assign them one of those kits you guys will see exactly what I mean in just a couple of minutes so as you can see on my screen here I've got base kit number one VIP number one and VIP number two so obviously my base kit is going to be the auto kit that players with no permissions at all no VIP levels will automatically be assigned that auto kit auto kit and I say auto kit but you don't necessarily have to call it an auto kit anymore you'll see what I mean and then I've got two more VIP one VIP two those are all permissions based you'll understand why that's important it's also worth noting that at this point as you can see i cannot claim this vip kit right here which means i will not ever be automatically assigned this oh just to be clear normally speaking you wouldn't see these auto kits available for anybody to select them while you're building your kits your different levels of auto kits you would want to select this option right here is hidden just make sure that there's a check mark there and then those available kits won't actually show up to be selectable which for auto kits you don't want but because I wanted to be able to show you guys these kits and how they would look if you were able to see them, I'd made mine visible, not hidden. So let's just go in and have a look at the base kit one right here. And we're going to go into edit kit. And as you can see by this permission section right here, there's no permission listed there. Therefore, no permission is required in order to get this kit. But if we go into VIP level one and do the same thing, you'll see that there's going to be a permission there. Kits.VIP1. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Know that this isn't actually making sense to you right now, but it will very soon. And just for argument's sake, we're going to go into VIP number two as well and show you that there is a permission on that one as well. So if we go into the configuration file for Rust kits, you'll see that there's a couple of things there that maybe if you're used to the older version of Rust kits, you might not quite understand how this works. So what the developer has done has made it so that you can have different levels of auto kits automatically assigned based on permission. So this is that list right here it starts on line 10 by default. So auto kits ordered by priority. What that means is when a player dies on your server, the plugin is going to check for their permissions level and assign them a kit based on their permissions level. So you want to put your highest rank permission first on this list because it starts highest rank and then it works all the way down to the default group. So in my test case scenario, I made it so that VIP two was my highest level. VIP one is next and then the default group is just the bottom one. And you can see that order of priority is reflected on my list right here. So when a player dies on the server, the plugin is going to check, does this player have the permission kits.vip2? If yes, they do have that permission, then of course the plugin is going to automatically assign this auto kit to that player. If they don't have that permission kits.vip2, it's going to check down to the next level. Does the player have kits.vip1? If it does, obviously it's going to assign that kit. If it doesn't, it's going to move on to the next one, base kit one. And in theory, everyone in your server that doesn't have any permissions at all is going to get this kit auto assigned to them. Another thing I want to bring your attention to before we leave this configuration file, this feature right here is actually is default set to false. Allow players to toggle auto kits on spawn. Normally that's set to false. I've changed it to true. I would suggest that you add that feature to your server as well. It's nice that players have that kind of control to decide whether they want to be assigned an auto kit or not. So let's just save our configuration file. And of course, we're going to reload the kits plugin. Don't worry about this error. That's just something that's a graphic not showing up correctly. Don't worry about it. And then we can go back in game and we can explore the permissions side of things. So like I said before, I don't have the VIP one or VIP two permission assigned to me. Therefore, if I kill myself right now, I'm automatically going to be assigned the base kit one. So KMS respawn on the beach. And sure enough, there you go. As you can see, I have this kit that I just threw together. It's a nothing kit, but you can tell that it's not the default kit. Hey, look, a sleeper. Yakabodo, Yakabito, Yakobito. So now if I 
go into one of my permissions managers, in this case, I'm using admin menu from chaos code, and I actually grant myself this permission in the bottom right hand corner right there, kits.vip1, you're going to see it respond completely differently. So now if I KMS, the plugin should check to see that I have a different permission than the default group. And when I wake up, I should have a different kit on me. And there we go. Just like I expected, I now have a wetsuit. I now have metal tools, whereas before I had stone tools. I think I had what a goat's head or something on before. So as you can see, the plugin determined that I actually had a permission assigned to me and gave me that kit instead, and it did it automatically. I'm going to go ahead and show you what happens when I change my VIP level to VIP level two. But before I do that, I just wanted to let you know that only 31% of you that actually watch my videos are subscribed to my channel. So if today is the day that I've earned your subscription, please do so. Hit that red subscribe button down below if you find my videos helpful in any way, shape or form. It seriously helps out my channel a lot and I cannot appreciate it more. All right, so let's go back in and let's remove the kits.vip1 and we're going to assign myself kits.vip2 and we're going to go through the exact same process again. So I'm going to KMS and when I wake up, I should have another different kit when I respawn. And sure enough, there we go. We've got the rad suit we've got high quality tools and a flashlight instead of a torch we do know that the plugin is doing exactly what we want it to do and you can have as many of these auto kits as you want and you can have different levels of permissions that you want to assign to these different auto kits you don't only have to have three you certainly don't only have to have one you can literally have as many as you want now honestly one of the best features of this iteration of rust kits is the ability for your players to shut off the automatically spawning with a kit so if we just do slash kit auto kit that will turn off the player spawning in with any auto kit at all. So if I KMS one more time, you'll see that I'm going to wake up with just a rock and a torch from default, just like you normally would on any other server. So there you go. It even says in chat, skipped giving auto kit as you have it disabled. So here I am, I have no clothes on and I only have a rock and a torch. All right, that's how you deal with auto kits. I know that there's been a lot of people out there that are struggling. They don't quite know how to deal with the different levels. Just make sure you put your highest permission priority at the top of the list and your lowest permission priority at the bottom of the list. The plugin will automatically go through and check each player to see if they actually have those permissions assigned to them or not. I'm not 100% sure that the documentation makes that perfectly clear. So I hope this clears up any misconceptions about how to assign auto kits. All right, that's it for today's video. Remember, I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So until next Friday, I hope you guys are staying safe and taking care of each other. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Friday. And if you've made it this far into the video, which I hope most of you have, I was recently contacted by a, I won't mention his name just yet, but I was recently contacted by a developer from UMod that apparently has something cool in store for us. So I'm going to talk to that developer and we'll see where that goes. And hopefully next week's video might be a little bit, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't even know what it is yet. So hope to see you guys then.